As a kid in the late 80s and early 90s, the video store was a big part of my childhood. This video is about keeping the spirit of the video store alive as I share with you some VHS pickups and some of my personal video store memories. It was the dawn of a new world, the latest must-have technology. A top-loading video cassette recorder, television stations no longer dictated what to watch. With a drive to the video library, the latest Hollywood title was yours for the night. Costs are prohibitive to take the whole family out to see the movies or to the drive-in and this sort of thing. And people are relying on home entertainment to entertain the whole family. Uh, video hire places are booming and we've got a lot of children's movies as well as adult movies. G'day guys, hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're watching this video, the humble video rental store was probably a hallmark of your childhood, just as it was for mine. And while the video store continued to play a role in my life through my teenage years, and, and even as far as my late 20s, before I'd climbed aboard the streaming train and I used to go to my local blockbuster and hire weekly DVDs for 50 cents a piece, if we're honest, the, the heyday, the prime of the video store was way before the DVD age when it was nothing but a sea of VHS as far as the eye could see. And back in those times, a membership at your local video store, for me at least, was absolutely essential. You know, we didn't have cable TV in our household, and if I remember correctly, buying VHS, buying movies or TV shows on VHS, at supermarkets or department stores was really expensive, way more expensive than to buy DVDs now. So if there was something that I wanted to watch, if there was a movie or something in particular that I was keen to see, it was either the cinema, which meant getting my mum and dad, mum or dad on board, which was, which was never easy, it was always a tough sell, or it was about going to the local video store, which was a much easier sell. Now thinking back on my childhood, there's two particular video stores that stand out for me. The first one was in a, a small strip of maybe a dozen shops about four or 500 meters from my house. It was two, two or three doors down from a supermarket. So if I went to the shops with my mum while she was doing the groceries, I'd be hanging out at the video store. And sometimes I even used to just ride my bike from home down to the shops, chain my bike up and just go hang out at the video store. Now, I think it was an independently owned store, like a, a family run store. I don't believe it was part of a chain. This is obviously a long shot, but if anyone out there who's watching this happens to have grown up or spent the 80s and 90s in the Hills District of Sydney, hit me in the comments, because I'd love to, to work out to try and pinpoint the name of that store. But it was awesome. It wasn't particularly big, um, but you know, for an eight or nine year old, it had an excellent selection. It sold snacks, it sold trading cards, just like these guys. Um, and I had a couple of arcade machines, one of which was Street Fighter 2. So, you know, I'd go down there, I'd ride my bike down there. Whether or not eight or nine year olds these days were able to ride their bikes down to the shops by themselves, I don't know. But back then it was just, it was just the way it was. So I'd ride my bike down there or I'd hang out, or I'd hang out down there while my mum was doing the groceries, buy some, buy some sweets, play some Street Fighter 2, maybe buy a, buy a packet of cards. And then once my mum finished the, the shop, finished her shopping, I'd then say, hey, can, you know, we, can, can we grab a movie? Can we grab a wrestling tape? I'd plead my case. So it was just an awesome place to go hang out for an hour or two. So that, that's the first one that stands out. The second one was when I was a little bit, you know, I was a couple of years older, probably 10 or 12, and it was a larger video store at a larger shopping center, but still just a suburban village shopping center. And it was a, it was a chain. I think it was a Civic video. It was much bigger. It had an awesome selection of uh, wrestling tapes on VHS. So, you know, I had, the, I had the wrestling tapes on rotation while I was waiting for the next WrestleMania or, or Royal Rumble to come out. And it also had an awesome selection of Super Nintendo games. And, and for me, you know, I definitely wasn't getting Super Nintendo games outside of my birthday or Christmas. They were, they were obviously very expensive. So outside of those two points in the year, if I wanted to play a new game, I was getting it from Civic Video. But it wasn't just wrestling tapes and Super Nintendo games. What made those video stores of the time what they were, were also the awesome selection of movies and TV shows on VHS, perfectly segmented by genre all around the store. And while those video stores, whether they be an independent, small independent local store, or whether they be a big uh, superstore that was part of a chain, 
Although they didn't have the infinite selection that we have these days with all the various streaming platforms, that didn't matter. Going to a video store back in the 80s or early 90s to find some weekend entertainment wasn't like you know, passively sitting on the couch and scrolling Netflix looking for something to watch to pass the time. Going to a video store was an event and when you compare all different aspects of pop culture from the 80s and 90s to now, we now have this unlimited choice and convenience at our fingertips, but it's come at the cost of the sense of occasion that we used to get back then. You know, I've got, um, I've got movies on my Netflix list that have been sitting there for two years because in uh, the way I kind of consider it is, oh, it'll always be there. I'll watch it another time when I feel like it. But as a kid, if there was something on TV that I wanted to watch, I had to be there sitting in front of the TV right when it came on to either watch it or record it. Otherwise, it'd be gone and I, you never knew when you'd see it again. And that's kind of what the video store was like. Sure, you can rent it another time, but the actual, you know, the, the rental period, whether it was overnight or whether it was weekly, it was a fleeting thing. You know, it was something that you had to take advantage of. And, you know, I remember whenever I'd rent something, whether it was a movie, a game, even if it was an overnight rental, I'd always watch it or play it um, more than once and, and really take advantage of that opportunity. Now, I love movies and have a really broad taste, but it's pretty safe to say we're not gonna, we're not gonna see The Godfather here, even though I love that movie, or we're not gonna see, you know, Casablanca. Um, that's not what this is about. These, these VHS pickups are movies that I love growing up, that I, I rented from the video store as a kid, or I, or I would've if I had been allowed to at the time. So let's get into the pickups. First up, we've got a couple of movies that I definitely rented from the video store as a kid. And I'm talking about 1989's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and 1991's Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Now, just a side note on the Bill and Ted movies. I, I haven't seen Bill and Ted face the music. For some reason, I don't feel all that compelled to. I mean, it, I've heard people enjoyed it. If I think about it, I guess, you know, what really appealed to me about these movies are, you know, the youthful charm of the characters and also kind of the music and pop culture feel of, of the time, of the late 80s, early 90s. And I, I can't see how that's going to translate in, you know, 2020 or 2021, whenever that movie came out, with, um, with the, the, the um, characters being like middle-aged men. Anyway, if you've seen the movie, whether you've got good things or bad things to say about it, um, if you could drop me a note in the comment, that would be awesome. But going back to these two, as a kid, I saw I actually saw uh, Bogus Journey first. Um, I was introduced to this movie by a, by a friend at school. I saw it having no idea that this had preceded it. And then, you know, wouldn't you know it, a, a month later or a few weeks later at uh, the video store closest to my nan's place when I was staying with my nan, I saw this one. And, for you know, I just, just because I'd seen Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey first, I just assumed that this was the sequel. But to me, that didn't, take away from my enjoyment of them in the slightest. I mean, both these movies, to me, have kind of pretty unique um, compartmentalized stories. I love them both equally. You know, I love the adventures through time and the interplay between Bill and Ted and the historical figures in Excellent Adventure. And then I also really enjoy, um, you know, Bill and Ted um, dueling with the, the Grim Reaper during Bogus Journey. So if you saw one of my recent toy hunting videos from a little while ago, I picked up my first uh, action figure from the Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure toy line, so that was cool. Definitely keeping an eye out for more of these. But I'm really happy to have these. They're ex-rental copies. I'm not sure if you can tell, but you can see where the genre sticker was here. It's a little bit less faded or I don't know, maybe there's some residue there. So they're definitely ex-rental copies, which is cool, which means we get some nice trailers at the at the start of them. But they've all been de-stickered, so I can't find I can't see where they've come from. Um, which is always interesting to know, you know, what video stores these tapes have come from. But in any case, really happy to have both of these guys in the VHS collection. Alright guys, next we've got another movie from 1989. And to me, it's my ultimate, it's my number one flagship must-have childhood nostalgic Christmas movie. And I'm talking about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This was the first movie in the National Lampoon's Vacation franchise that I saw. 
Um, you know, I, I grew up on this movie as a kid. I've, I've been watching this every single Christmas since way before I was old enough to be able to comprehend a lot of the humor in this movie. But it sparked the love of the franchise. You know, years after watching this for the first time, I, I got my hands on the original Vacation. Absolutely love that equally as much as this and, and on from there. But, you know, I grew up on this movie. To me, whether, from when I was about seven years old to to this, to this current day, it's not Christmas unless I rent this movie. I got all sorts of memories renting this out. Growing up, this was always a really tricky movie to, to actually get at the video store because at Christmas time, it was so in demand. I'm sure if you, go, I'm sure if you go, went to the video store in July, this would be sitting here. But you know, any, any time from the last week of December to Christmas, uh, sorry, apologies, from last week of November to Christmas day, it was just impossible to find this movie and inevitably we'd go there on the first weekend of christmas it would be out you know it, it was always a, it was always a weekly rental so the the staff at the video store would say hey come back on this date when it's due back we'd go back on this date it'd be out again we'd have missed the boat and and if luck was on our side we'd, we'd manage to pick this up just before christmas and get our fix and what's really cool about this movie is you know, because I've been watching it for so many years, because, you know, I first started watching this movie when I was about seven, it meant something different to me then than it does now. Back then it was all about, you know, the slapstick humor. It was about, um, you know, Clark's misadventures, falling off the ladder or, you know, losing control of his sled. But then when I became a little bit older, I still found those things hilarious. But, you know, then it was about the interplay between the family, you know, the cousin Eddie character, and um, you know Clark struggling to hold it together while everything around him was going wrong. And then you know I don't have kids yet, but I'm sure once I'm a dad, or um, I, if other parents watch this, it probably means, or grandparents watch this, it probably means something different again. So you know, considering it's just a straight holiday comedy, I think this movie means a lot of things to a lot of people, and it certainly means that to me. So we're really happy to have. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation in the VHS collection. It's a retail copy, it's not an X rental copy, but that's okay. We're still happy to have Christmas Vacation in the collection. Alrighty, we're gonna stick with the Christmas theme for the next couple of VHS pickups. And the next one we've got is a little bit of a later movie. This is a 1996 release, and it's an X rental copy of Jingle All The Way. You know, another movie that, that easily, easily makes my top 10 all-time Christmas movies list. It's not displacing Christmas Vacation anytime soon. It's not um, It's not getting past Home Alone anytime soon. But once we get out of those out of those top three, top five, Jingle All The Way is firmly in that space. You know, this, this is kind of a different one. So this came out in 1996. So by the time it's at the video store, it would have to be 1997. And at that point, you know, I'm 13 years old, I'm in grade seven or eight, so I'm a little bit older. Christmas is something that I still celebrate, still something that gets me excited. Our family's big into Christmas. I'm someone that really gets into the Christmas spirit, but you know, obviously Christmas means something a little bit different when you're 13 than it does when you're, you know, seven. But I had a younger brother and, um, you know, we, we were obviously still flying the flag for Christmas. And, and the other thing was, I wasn't playing with action figures obviously anymore. I'm 13 years old, I'm playing with video games, I'm um, big into mountain biking, but I'm not so far removed from collecting uh, vintage turtles or the Hasbro WWF figures that I can't identify with the, you know, with the whole theme of having this hot action figure that every kid wants at Christmas and all the parents are scrambling to find. So definitely identified with it. Um, and uh, you know, just always enjoyed this movie growing up and it's kind of a, a similar story of doesn't quite feel like Christmas if I can't watch this at least once um, during the season. So another one that I'm really happy to have in the collection and I'm starting to build a nice little pile of top uh, Christmas movies on VHS. Alrighty, so the next pickup that we have is the last Christmas themed uh, VHS pickup and I'm talking about 1988 Scrooged. Now this was a movie that I actually learnt of, that I, I found out about, that I discovered for the first time in the video store. So as probably with most video stores, the video stores that I grew up going to had awesome holiday setups. So once we'd get to the last week or so of November, or you know the middle of November, 
um, they'd roll out an awesome genre area specific to Christmas movies. And you know, we'd usually go in there uh, in December uh, as a family and try and find Home Alone or try and find uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And, and if they were rented out, which they uh, usually were because they were weekly movies, the video stores only had one copy of those, you know, we'd then move on to see what other Christmas movies were in this area. And that's where I discovered Scrooge. And that's another awesome thing about video stores because, you know, for me, how would I find out about a movie as a kid without obviously pre-internet? Um, through other kids or, or, or you know my parents telling me about it if it was at the cinema and it was being advertised or if it just happened to be on TV on one of the three commercial TV stations that I grew up with uh, if not for those things I'd find out about movies at the video store and that's where I discovered this and since first renting it as a kid it's become an old faithful that gets rolled out once a year so I'm um, you know really happy to pick up Scrooge it's an X rental copy it's from it's from Movie World, a video store called Movie World, but I'm not quite sure which one. It's got the awesome, you know, rewind before return sticker on there, which are extremely painful to try and get off if you're trying to inspect the condition of the VHS spool, which is something I'm trying to do because just a side note, I've picked up a couple of VHS tapes that unfortunately have mold on them. So I'm trying to um, spot, the, spot that, so I'm not putting that through my, VHS, uh, through my VCR. Anyway. So that's a side note, I'm rambling. So we've got Scrooge from Movie World Video Rental. And uh, another one that I'm really happy to have, another one that makes the top all-time Christmas movies list. And uh, I'm a big fan of Bill Murray. And obviously we all know the story of A Christmas Carol, um, but it's, a, it's an interesting take. That never bothered me watching this, knowing where it's all going. Um, it's still a fun take. I really like the way the, the ghosts look uh, and the roles they occupy in this movie. So um, that's another reason why I'm really happy to have the X rental copy of Scrooge in the collection. All right, so now we move away from the Christmas theme with a pickup that might be my, my pick of the bunch. It might be my favorite one in this lot of VHS. And I'm talking about an X rental copy of the 1987 80s classic, at least for me. And I'm talking about Over the Top. Now, I, I didn't grow up on this movie. I, I, I didn't see it in the, in the 90s. Um, I, I only probably saw this movie maybe three or four years ago when it was on Netflix. So I'm definitely late to the party. I'm late to the over-the-top bandwagon. But since first watching it, I, I love it and I knew I had to try and find it on, on VHS. I don't know why I love this movie as much as I do, but I've always enjoyed uh, road trip movies. Um, I, I've always been really fascinated by, you know, Route 66 American road travel culture, you know, and also that, that long haul truck driver, you know, story is always something that's kind of intrigued me. The arm wrestling theme is obviously quite silly, but it just works. Obviously, it's got an awesome 80s rock soundtrack and who doesn't love 80s Stallone? So really happy to have over the top. Uh, it's an ex-rental copy from... Civic Video Mentone in Victoria. So that's cool that it's still got the Civic Video uh, sticker on there. And uh, as, as you might be aware, if you're watching this, uh, an awesome toy line for Over the Top was released uh, around about when this movie came out. Some really cool action figures. Um, they have an awesome like arm wrestling uh, action feature, which is kind of cool. They're really difficult to come by. If I ever see them, I'm going to pick them up, provided they're not astronomically priced, which often they are. But for now, I'm going to have to settle with an extra rental copy of Over the Top on VHS, which is, which is pretty damn cool. Alrighty, so next up we have the 1991 release of Adam's Family. Um, now this movie was right up my alley as a kid. For some reason, I was always into kind of creepy monster related movies and pop culture. I wasn't necessarily into like proper horror movies because A, I didn't really have an older sibling or a family member that was really into them to kind of introduce me to them. And the second reason is, I, as a kid, I was, it didn't take much to scare me. Let's just say that. You know, I vividly remember going to the horror section in, in my local video store as a kid and looking at all the covers because I was fascinated by these horror movies and I really enjoyed looking at the covers. Um, but I, I didn't have the appetite to want to watch them and 
And I remember like even some of the covers just spooked me. Um, I've, the, the example that comes to mind um, the, the most vividly is the, the Hellraiser movies. I remember looking at the Hellraiser covers and thinking, wow, I wonder, I want to know what that's all about, but I, there's no way I can watch it. Um, so, you know, when, when, I, when I talk about, uh, you know, being into creepy monster related things as a kid, I'm talking about the family friendly monster related stuff. I'm talking about, you know, the Addams Family, the monsters. I was really into Scooby Doo as a kid. Uh, I was really into, you know, like 80s uh, movie monster books and magazines, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. I collected monster in my pocket toys. So that's, that's, that was right up my alley as a kid. That's, you know, that was the sort of stuff I was into. And obviously the Adams Family really, really fit the bill. And the other cool thing about it is uh, it's got an awesome cover, man. I, I really like the, the Adams Family cover art, the poster art. It's got, the, you know, the creepy take on the family photo, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's the interesting thing. Before social media, before, you know, Netflix trending lists, and, and other tools that we have now to promote movies. Back then it was really limited to trailers that you'd see in the video store on uh, you know movies that you'd rent. But aside from that, you really judged whether you wanted to see a movie or not based on the front and back of a VHS tape. So, um, you know, and, and, and covers like this really jumped out at me. So really happy to have The Addams Family. It's an X rental copy. Uh, it's from Movie Land Gawler, which is kind of cool. But a lot of the stickers are taken off it, but it's in really nice condition. So really happy to have an X rental copy of The Addams Family in the VHS collection. Okay, so next up we've got 1990s Arachnophobia. Now I mentioned that I wasn't into horror movies as a kid, but I guess this isn't horror strictly speaking. It kind of blurs the line of horror and comedy. Um, but I really enjoyed this movie as a kid. It scared me but in a way that I could manage and, and have fun with at the same time. I watched this movie more recently and uh, I think it definitely holds up. So if you've not seen Arachnophobia, I suggest you give it a watch. You know, when you think about, you know, a plague of killer spiders in a small town setting, it's a pretty simple recipe for scares for a child aged audience or for a, for a family friendly audience. Um, but you know, it's definitely got those scary visuals but it blurs it with some genuinely funny moments and it's got um, some pretty cool performances in it. So if you haven't seen Arachnophobia, I suggest you give it a watch. It's a retail copy, it's not X rental, but that's okay. Really happy to have one of my favorites, Arachnophobia in the VHS collection. Next up, 1991's Problem Child 2. Now, I actually don't remember an awful lot about Problem Child 2. I, I definitely grew up on the first Problem Child movie. I watched that a bunch of times. I uh, definitely rented it quite a few times. And uh, I've, I've not seen it as an adult. Um, I've been on the hunt for Problem Child 1 on VHS, but the search continues. In the meantime, I was able to find two for a couple of bucks, so I picked it up. But um, I'm sure if I was to watch Problem Child 1, or, or probably Problem Child 2 now, it'd be obnoxious, it'd be cringeworthy. But, you know, it just was one of my favorites um, throughout my childhood, so I had to pick this up. But, you know, I, I, I fondly remember the, the character of Junior, um, you know, making the nun's life hell at the orphanage, um, you know, becoming pen pals with the serial killer, and then making his, adopt, his adoptive father, played by John Ritter, absolutely lose it. Um, but, you know, I just thought it was hilarious at the time. Uh, don't remember too much about this, but that's okay. Um, I'll, I'm sure I'll give it a watch and it will bring back some memories. So we've got Problem Child 2 in the collection, retail copy, and the search continues for Problem Child 1. And once I get Problem Child 1, I might watch them back to back and do a review video. So next up, we've got a 1988 release, and it's a retail copy of The Lamb Before Time. Now, when I think of this movie, I don't necessarily think of um, the video store, I actually think of Pizza Hut. This movie was notable for being uh, part of a, a pretty uh, memorable fast food promotion in partnership with Pizza Hut where they released some pretty memorable um, hand puppet toys. I recently completed the collection of the hand puppets. I didn't necessarily grow up on this movie, but I saw it going cheap, so I thought it'd be a, a nice pickup to display with those promotional Pizza Hut toys. All right, so that's it for my movies on VHS pickups. 
I've also picked up some pretty cool WWF wrestling VHS tapes, predominantly um, pay-per-view events from the early 90s, something that was my main reason for going to my local video store when I was 9, 10, 11 years old. So I look forward to sharing those with you guys, but I've rambled on long enough, so I'm gonna save that for a new video. So the VHS collection's growing nicely, but much like the action figure collection, I'm, I'm accumulating more items than I have shelves to display them. So like I mentioned uh, previously, very soon I'm, I'm gonna be buying another one of these uh, display cabinets. So everything over here in this shelf here will move into the display cabinets and that's gonna free that shelf there, that, that bookcase there, uh, up to display the VHS tapes. So we're getting there. But guys, that's it for today. I'll be back soon with another video. Uh, I believe in action figure pickups video. I think we're gonna be talking about Kenner's The Real Ghostbusters line. So I'll be back soon for that one. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, if you want some more pop culture nostalgia in your life, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I'd love to hear about your guys' um, most memorable video store memories. So um, touch base with us in the comments, whether it's with video store memories, pickups of your own, or just to shoot the breeze, always love that as well. But that's it for today. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Yeah.